Hello, traders. Well, now I need my microphone. What am I doing? Hello, traders out there in, trading, in the tra trading world. What, what am I saying? I'm just trying to get a video out the door and I can't even speak. My name is D7 here at Grok Trade, weekend edition of uh, video July 28th, July 28th, 2019. That's what this video is good for. All right, let's get going. Markets on Friday, everybody in bullish territory. NASDAQ up the most, Russell's up 1%. You have U.S. dollar flat, um, crude oil up a bit, silver down, gold higher, VIX so down. This is a big deal. We're only at 12.2 on the VIX. Uh, there's no fear out there, so markets are just up, 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 okay? But I'm going to show you something that might be of some concern. We're at 9,400 on Bitcoin, so it's I'm coming down just a bit. Here's the deal. The S&P 500, I'm getting ready to do something. If I look here and I scrunch this, scrunch this, scrunch this, you're going to see going all the way back to 2015 when I started this. I used to use thumbs back here in 2015. Look at this. If I, this is a daily chart. I used to use thumbs for my buy and sells back here, if you guys remember this. I don't know. You guys go back a long time. Let me know in the, um, the notes how long you've been going back, what year you started watching me. <laughs> but um, I used to do those. Then later, I went with the arrows. So the arrows, basically, uh, I would tell what I was looking at, buy or sell at any given time. However, so many, a lot of confusion has come from this. People, I, I don't need to show these anymore and I don't plan on it actually. Um, watch this, watch what I'm getting ready to do. I'm gonna do this live here on this. I'm gonna right click, I use TradingView. There's a link down below in the comments, TradingView. I, this is my preferred thing. I used to use ZSIG, I use TradingView now. Links down there, but um, watch what I'm getting ready to do. This is for everybody to see. I'm going to go remove all drawing tools. You see this? Remove all. I can't get those back now, or can I? If I go here, reset chart. Ooh, no, nope, that's not. See, I I can't even get it back. I just deleted everything on the spider, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the diamonds. Same thing here. I'm going to go over here, right click. I'm going to go to delete. Whoa. Can I delete on this one? What's going on? Why can I not delete? Am I missing it? Oh, I know. It's down further. It was blocked. Remove all drawing tools. So now diamonds are done. NASDAQ. I'm going to go here. Remove all drawing tools. Done. That one's gone. Russell's 2000. I'm going to right click. Drawing tools. Gone. I can't get these back. These are gone forever. I'm going to go here, right click, all, remove all drawing tools. US dollar. I'm going to go here. Let's keep doing it. I'm just doing it live for everybody. You, you see it right here. You're seeing it here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go here on crude oil, silver. Go here and remove. Uh, look at this nice run we've got. Just a beautiful run um, on silver. But I'm going to go here, delete all. So you're gone. We're cleaning it up. Gold, it's going to be gone. Gold, VIX, it's going to be gone. All right. So let's go back to the spiders. Let's look at this. We're going to look at it with just fresh eyes, clean eyes. And I, I had a mentorship this weekend, and it's the advanced one for a ones. Shared it with people. Said, shared it with those guys. And... Um, Text message just coming in middle of this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> share it with those guys. I said, I'm going to get rid of all my drawing tools, all my indicators. Just get rid of them. I'm going to go back to what I used to do. So in four years, I've changed what I've been doing in four years. Did it. Just made it up. Why? Because, just because. I'm just, that's just because. So now if I look at the spiders, the question is what's going on with the spiders? I'm going to draw a couple of trend lines here that will be of probably some great importance to us. Go there, there, go to a line chart, blow this up, tighten it up. And that's what we're looking at right there, gang. So we touched it, we dropped, we touched it, and we dropped. We're almost ready to touch it again. That would be a good area for a reversal. And if I were to draw another trend line, I would go to this one and that one. And there we have it, a rising wedge. 
a rising wedge. And for those who have taken the 301 mentorship, look what we have here on the MACD. Do you see guys see that? Look at what we have right there, right there. So that should tell you guys what is to come. <clears throat> But that's what we're looking at on the S&P 500. Very important to me. The diamonds. The diamonds, this is a nice bull pennant, guys. This could get nice and bullish. Nice bull pennant. Nice bull pennant. I'm liking that. And what I'm not liking is that. Because that is yet again, yet again, a rising wedge, a rising wedgie. I always go back to see if it makes sense anywhere else. So I hit those two, we missed hitting it there, kind of, kind of weak, go there, do that. And for those in the 401s, did you guys see the flatness? This was on the online one. Look at the flat one there. Look at the fl flat one there. That's for the 401 mentorship students. Very interesting. But that's what was going on in the diamonds. Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. But it's a bull pennant, guys. That could get bullish. Stay above the 20-day moving average. Look for that to go higher. NASDAQ has had a nice run here. I do want to bring in some data. I do want to bring in... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, that's interesting. So let's go to... Wow. So I'm going to not go to this one going to go to that one and yeah I think that makes a lot of sense makes a lot of sense go here go up so hit resistance here a couple times almost hit it again we hit it we hit it so we're at this area of resistance. The other thing that we have going here that I see, but I wanna make sure you guys see it too. We had that trend line. If we go to a line chart, you'll see that we, we went right there. So um, support, 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 now resistance, and now we're on the wrong side of that trend line. If you look at this on a candlestick chart, it's harder to see. But it does show some level of relative weakness there. And so we're just in one of those places. And you can look here at the MACD. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this compared to that. So yeah, we have a little bit of issue here with the divergence. A little bit of issue. Russell's to a 1,000. What I like is we popped up and we stayed high here. But the question is, what is going on at this, the 401 online that we had a couple weeks ago, look at this flatty right there. Remember us talking about that? Remember talking about that? It's crazy what we're seeing there. Crazy. Now I wanna go over here, draw a couple trend lines. Um, oops, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Now I want to see if it made sense today. We poked up. See how we're poking up over this? It's very odd. Normally, we touched it there, so it's valid. Normally, if you get over it, you're going to stay over it. But look what it's doing there. That's telling me it's wanting to go higher. So all this resistance level we're seeing, we could actually keep going higher with the Dow or the um, VIX looking so strong, meaning it's really bullish. I, I there's nothing saying that we shouldn't just keep going higher. This is the Russell's 2000. There's one of these flatties again. Oh, look.
Look at that. Oh, man. We're going to have to add that to Mark the Meerkat. If you're watching this, we're going to have to add this to our mentoring. When I show this to you, you're just going to be blown away. Blown away. Let's take a look here. So I'm really liking, or financials rather. I said small caps. This is financials. Financials are looking pretty strong. Uh, fairly strong. A little bit of a rising wedge here, but uh, let's just see what happens. U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar is really strong, guys. That is an all-time record high for the U.S. dollar. I mean, no. I mean, all-time record high does. It's high for the last year. That's where we're at right now. So U.S. dollar, very strong. So the, U, the stock should not be doing great. And, I mean, it's weird to see the strong dollar and also strong commodities and strong stocks. Just kind of a crazy place. You usually don't see it like that. Crude oil. Crude oil is pinching. That's interesting. Interesting. Let's go here, here, there, there. Man, I'd actually do another one. There to here. Another flatty right there. So big time pinching, big time symmetric triangle, moving average acting as resistance, more than support. So crude oil, under a little bit of pressure, we do have a low base. Look for crude, crude oil to potentially go lower. Silver has been on the fire. It's a nice bull pullback. Look for an entry on that bull pullback, guys. Gold is up, up, up. Another pullback. Potentially look for an entry here. I'm, it looks like I'm technically more bullish on silver than I am gold at this moment, but both of them look really strong. VIX. VIX is just dropping, dropping, dropping. We're at an area of support here. This 12, we're right at it. Every time we get to this 12, we rally higher. Yeah, 12, we rally higher. So we're at that area that if we're going to get bearish in the markets, it is right now. However, we could just go sideways here for a while. This week's going to be a big week. You know, we have the earnings, all these earnings coming out. So that's where we're at. All right, monologue time. Let's just get to it. <clears throat> monologue time. I have been gone the last couple of weeks. I have been busier in a one arm paper hanger. And I am, that is no joke. Busy, busy, busy. Why? Because I'm a hopeless entrepreneur. I jump into everything. If you guys follow me on Twitter, it's at Des Woodruff. D E S W O O D R U F F. You can follow me on my Facebook page, uh, Daz D E S W, and then Woodruff W O O D R U F F. Daz W Woodruff. You can follow me there. Instagram Daz underscore W underscore Woodruff. Instagram. So that's real name's Daz Woodruff, and you can follow me on those things. But <clears throat> I. We just did a couple. I, once a year, I'll teach a 401 class. That's the advanced class. That's where we, um, you know what? Let me get it. I'll just get it for you right now so you can see this. So the 401 class, I don't know why I put on headphones. I don't need to hear you. You just need to hear me. <laughs> I have no idea why I put those on. But I have this book. And if you look in the book... I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you can see this, but all we do is we pull up charts and we look for buying opportunities, right? Am I, is that the right way? Yeah. We look for buying or selling opportunities on all the charts. And it's just page after page after page of, of charts and then we look at live charts so we pull up like we're like we just did we look at live charts and we look for buying opportunities that are right now and we look for buying opportunities that we had missed and then we calculate if that was a trade setup and we identify it then we calculate do we make money did we lose money you know, did we break even on it? What did we do? And then after about 10 trades, 25 trades, 50 trades, 100 trades, we ask ourselves, did we make money or did we not make money? 
Yeah. The students' jaws always hit the ground, their eyes pop, and they say, I can't believe how much money we left on the table by not being able to identify patterns. So that's why I spent, so anyway, I did a, a, I, I teach this once a year, but in the last couple of weeks, I've, I've taught two of these, and you have to go through the 301 mentorship first where you know how to trade, you have the fun, uh, foundations of trading down, you know how to draw your trend lines, you know our order types that we use, you know what the different um, stop loss management stuff that we do. After we learn all the stuff, then the 401, that's when I do the 401 with them. But I did it online first. And um, when you heard me talking about the flatties on drawing trend lines, I stumbled on something. It's very advanced, and I'm still studying it myself, but it's fascinating on how it's helping us increase the probabilities of drawing correct trend lines. <clears throat> correct trend lines. Mm. I have hot coffee here in my thermos, and then I drink seltzer water flavored, and it's cold. I have a hot drink and a cold drink together. Yeah, anyway. So, but then the last two days I've spent doing a live class. Some people just like to do it live, you know, together. So I um, had some people come. Tony, a shout out to you, Tony, from Arkansas. Previous a um, uh, police officer, 14 years. And uh, he's a trader. And then Bill, hello, Bill. From right here in Indianapolis, big time real estate investor. It's just crazy how many real estate guys that come through. If you're a real estate investor, you, especially if you've gone through the heartache and turmoil of 2008, chances are pretty good that you have interest in trading. We get a lot of the, you guys that come through, and especially if you're analytical in your thinking, especially if you're engineer types. And for whatever reason, we get a lot of lefties, South, you know, South Pauls that come in, and those people who want to one day fly a plane or learn to fly or your pilots already. It's funny how many of those we get. Yeah. A lot of doctors come through also. The last couple of days I did a live class for the 401s and it's always nice. I don't teach as much nowadays as uh, Mark does. Mark is kind of the superstar. He is the guru. He's the one that is killing it. But me, I'm a hopeless entrepreneur so I scratch my itch by going out doing businesses. Believe it or not, and I shared this with the students this weekend or the last couple of days, is trading gets boring for me. I know, man, it, some of you, your jaw hits the floor. Trading is boring. It's kind of like the thing because, and it, and it should be boring, right? Because if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, over and over, not... It, there's no chance. I mean, you, it's going to be boring. It's going to be. It's like even if you had a money machine and it was cranking out $100 bills, Benjamins, you crank it, it would be great for the first six months of cranking that. You get to the eighth month, ninth month, tenth month, two years of cranking. <laughs> Man, it's just monotonous. So anyway, I'm... I, the thing that helps me in my trading is jumping into different instruments, like cryptocurrency, for example. I'm I'm big into crypto. I, I'm liking that. So that helps keep my interest in the trading. But what scratches my itch is jumping into the creativity of business. Some of you guys will see, and this will be a big shock to you, huge shock. But I am the first to market to certain things like I was the first to market for automotive sales online my domain name came in at the same time facebook.com their domain when they got theirs amazon.com beat me by just a little bit I'm way before YouTube I am way before um, Twitter I'm way before a lot of people I was the earliest to market when it come to automotive sales and I was also a first to do daily trading videos. They got really popular at a, a place, and you can find them now. You can go and see this for yourself. If you go to trade to win, trade and then the number two and win, W I N dot com, you have to search for free trading videos. If you search for free trading videos and D7, D7 free trading videos, uh, or did I go by D7? It might be DES44, D E S44. 
I may not be DES, DES44 back then. <clears throat> Search for that, and you will see in 2004, I was doing trading videos. YouTube didn't even start until 2005. I was before YouTube doing daily trading videos. And I was doing it over there in the UK, on the uh, European side of things, and, um, and they got really popular, brought it here to the US, got my website, freeonlinetradingeducation.com and Grok Trade. And, um, a website went number one on Google, and when that happened, it was just opened up a education company for me. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So I was the first in automotive sales online, and the first to uh, distribute uh, rich media content for day trading. Do you guys remember those old enough to remember that we had to call our brokers to make a trade, and it would cost us like two percent of our portfolio to make that trade. <laughs> and later, all of a sudden, E-Trade came out, and Schwab came out, and it was like twenty-five bucks per trade, 25 to get in, 25 to get out. It's crazy, right? You remember those days? If you remember those days, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, trading, we, we could start doing it online. That was that was a neat thing. So I started doing these trading videos. First in the world to start doing them on a regular basis. Um, there might have been a couple other people that did a trading video before me. If so, I just don't know about them. But this is why well, I was way, I was earlier than YouTube. So just keep that in mind, way earlier. And I didn't get started on YouTube until after a few years after I got started, I think. So, <clears throat> um, but here's what's going to shock you, or some of you, is I created a new business. I'll disclose this for those who are still watching. And if you've made it to the end, let me know. Made it. <laughs> and that is crazy. You can say that if you want to. But I started a new business. New business is a bare knuckle fighting promotion. Bare knuckle fighting. Back in the 1800s, late 1800s, there was something called pugilism, fisticuffs. <laughs> and fisticuffs, or pugilism, was a, a sport that took place. Um, John Sullivan was Johnny Sullivan was the heavyweight champion in bare knuckle fighting. Ultimately, it became illegal. Well, now it's legalized here in the United States, in Wyoming, Mississippi, and Florida. Other states are opening up, and which is fantastic, right? Um, uh, we believe the reason I got into it is because I, I saw five years ago, four years ago, I work with a famous fighter. His name's Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock, and I, I told him, I said, I think the next combat sport will be uh, bare knuckle fighting, and sure enough, that's what's happened. It's happening, and my prediction has come to fruition. It's hap you know, we, it yet again. So some people refer to me as a visionary. Maybe you know, I, so far I've, <laughs> I've helped see the future on a few things. But what's interesting is I'm in this new promotion called Valor, Valor Bare Knuckle, Valor BK, and I am the CEO. I'm the chairman. I'm the co-founder of this. We were we were released and we were announced with the AP News Associated Press um, a couple Tuesdays ago, and maybe in USA Today next week. So, which is crazy. So, the reason I'm sharing it with you guys is because you're going to start seeing me in other areas that are outside the financial. Every, you guys know me as the financial guys. And a lot of you guys don't know this. I didn't go to college for finance or economics or investing. I didn't any of that. I quit college. I initially went for fine arts, for graphic design. I quit to start a business. That was my auto, automotive business in 94, 95. That's what I did. So I quit to start up online sales. So I am that I am that stereotypical entrepreneur who quits college, starts businesses, and, and does that. So that's what I'm doing. Call me crazy, unsubscribe if you don't believe it. But here, let me tell you why I got into it. Because one, I saw that that's our tomorrow. I'm a fan of combat sports. But it bare knuckle is uh, safer than traditional boxing. Like uh, last week, we had a boxer, a boxer, Die. He was young. He's only 28 from Russia. He was trying to get a green card to live here in the United States and wanted to be a world champ to make that happen quicker. And he ended up dying. He took too much of a punishment. But here's here's the deal. Bare knuckle is, is safer uh, because if you pad your hands, well, if you were to hang a chain from the ceiling, put a bowling ball on it, if you put boxing gloves on, you could hit that bowling ball or that head a lot. And that head's going to take a lot of trauma, a lot of... A lot of damage. You 
take the gloves off, you can't hit the bowling ball as hard. Same thing with the cranium. Cranium is much more dense than like knuckles, right? So um, you can't hit as hard. So you, when you hit, the, you don't go all the rounds in traditional boxing. There's only three rounds in uh, bare knuckle. It's much shorter, and you, you can't hit nearly as hard, or you'll, you'll damage your hand. And if you damage your hand, you're out. You're done. And um, the other thing, cage fighting, MMA, UFC, if you've heard of it, um, they use elbows and knees, and th those can be very damaging. Bare knuckles is, uh, is, can be damaging, but not nearly as lethal and uh, as powerful as a knee or an elbow. So we believe that bare knuckle is the safer alternative to traditional boxing, the safer alternative to um, cage fighting. And, and we think that because um, it is safer, that's why the states are starting to legalize it. Virtually every state will have this legalized. And if your jaw has been picked up off the ground, <laughs> I, so that's true. Everything I just shared with you is factual. And um, am I still investing? Yes, man, because it's the best business model out there. There's no better business model. Even these other businesses that get started, there's nothing better than trading. I, I can be in and out of the market at any time. Eventually, the markets will tank, right? They will come back. 11-year run, it's a big run, man. Let's, it's, it's just a matter of time. It's going to come back. And when it comes back, it's going to be a significant pullback. So... That's when we're going to make a lot of money. And I'm, I'm kind of jazzed about that because, man, give us a big, big move. We had our big move up. Now let's have a big move down. Let's make a ton of money. I don't want anybody to get hurt. Let's just capitalize off of it. Let's be smart. Man, I mean, team up with us if you want to know when this is going to happen and how to identify when it's going to happen. That's probably a better way of saying it. And know how to trade it and make money to the downside. Man, team up with us, guys. Uh, just talk about it's our mentorship. We call it a three of one. It's three days, and you're gonna sit with us all three days, and we're gonna we're gonna teach it all to you. And your your mind will be blown away. There's just so much money out there to tap into. But I like the fact that I can be at risk or out of out of risk at any time. I can be in markets, out of markets. I love the fact that I can go in and have a um, be long or short, meaning I can make money on the upside or when the market's dropping, I can also make money. Are you kidding me? That's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. But up here, grocktrade.com, we have some webinars. You can go take those webinars and, and jump into some things. But if I were you, you know, go check out the mentorship. Hang out with us. Three days. Three days. That's where it's at. Um, so... Now, you know the rest of the story. Remember Paul Harvey? And that's the rest of the story. If you know Paul Harvey, put down, I know Paul Harvey. <laughs> or know of him. Oh, man. If I'm crazy out of my mind, say you are crazy out of your mind. I read every text. I try to respond to them. I try. But the reason I've been MIA the last, three, last couple of weeks is because I've been launching this thing. And holy smokes, we have a TV show coming out. We have, uh, I mean, you just can't believe what we have going on. We have our distribution for pay-per-view. It's a pay-per-view, September 21st. Mark it on your calendars if you want to see what I'll be doing September 21st on pay-per-view. <laughs> 29.95. So it's under 30 bucks. Um, but our pay-per-view distribution is is the biggest you can get, meaning that it's the same distribution that Mayweather and McGregor had. And not only that, we have in international distribution. And then we have digital. So for you young people, if you are under the age of 19, 20, whatever, let me know. Say, I'm I'm watching and I'm a Y, Gen Y. Man, my... My chair keeps sliding to the side. <laughs> um, if you're a Gen Y or a Gen X or or um, not uh, or Z or rather, let me know. Let me know. I'm kind of looking for individuals who'd like to join our team as volunteers. If you want to be on Team Grok, <laughs> to be ambassadors for us to help just spread the good news, to be out there in cyber world sharing our videos and stuff. I'm interested. Interested. 
You can contact me at des, D-E-S, D as in David, E as Echo, S as in Sierra, at groktrade, at groktrade.com. That's my email. And yeah, it would be interesting to talk with some um, ambassadors of Grok Trade, people who love us and would like to, you know, help share our videos and content to others. That would be awesome. That's it. I am just rambling. Picked up some new Ancestry DNA things. I did Ancestry DNA and did 23andMe DNA. 23andMe is the medical side of DNA, which is more interesting. Uh, Ancestry is cool too. That one, you know, you find out where you're from. Guys, I am got a you know a lot of Irish in me, a lot of Irish, and uh, Netherlands, Dutch. You know, I'm up there. I'm Scandinavia. Uh, it's neat. They said I, <laughs> I'm offspring of Vikings. <laughs> Vikings used to go and pillage and rape. Apparently, I'm <laughs> one of those kids. <laughs> Way down the line. Oh boy! All right, I'm rambling. That's it. Uh, so. I'll, I'll be more more uh, active doing these videos for you guys. We'll catch up with you later. Bye.